guys! Welcome on back to She's Diabetic. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I have been type 1 diabetic for over 20 years, and this is just a channel all about that. My life with type 1 diabetes. Some tips, some tricks, hacks, reviews, which we've got one for you today, that sort of thing, but most of all just life with the condition from my perspective only. So this is going to be my review of the Control IQ software aspect of the Tandem T-Slim X2 insulin pump. I reviewed the pump in a previous video, but I felt like there was just too much information to pack in for the control IQ aspect, so thus the standalone video. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it up above and down below, and if you're coming straight from that video, welcome, and if you just wanna know about control IQ, you're in the right place. So first off, what is control IQ? In my own words and my own experience, which all of this is from only my own experience, Control IQ is as close to an artificial pancreas, a closed loop system, as we have on the market to date. However, it's not totally closed loop, so they call it a semi-closed loop system. Control IQ is an algorithm that is used by your T-Slim X2 insulin pump, takes readings from your Dexcom G6 CGM, which is the only CGM it works with at the moment. It plugs those blood glucose readings into the algorithm along with a whole host of other information that it's gathered about you, weight, total daily dose, correction factor, all of those things, and adjusts your basal rates accordingly, both for going high and going low. Now, some of you may be familiar with basal IQ, which is basically the bottom half of this software, as in it will suspend insulin when going low, but it will not give insulin when going high. And I wanna preface this entire information with the fact that we are dealing with an algorithm that is predicting blood glucose readings 30 minutes in the future. So it is not acting in the moment, it is acting on information that it predicts 30 minutes in the future. This is very, very, very important because as we all probably know, insulin does not take effect like that, nor does the reduction of insulin take effect like that. So basic tech specs, I've said it already, it works with the Dexcom G6 CGM sensor. You have to have a Dexcom G6 in order to make use of this software. It's working with a prediction of 30 minutes in the future with its algorithm. And essentially where the algorithm wants you to be is between 112.5 and 160 milligrams per deciliter. So let's talk about the high end of the spectrum and the low end of the spectrum in terms of blood glucose readings. If your blood glucose reading is predicted to be, remember 30 minutes in the future, above 160, the algorithm is going to increase your basal or background insulin rates. Above 180, it is going to actually deliver a correction dose. Some people refer to this as microboluses. So it is going to automatically actually deliver you insulin to bring you back down into the range that it wants to see you within. So that's the high end of the spectrum. If your blood glucose reading is between 112 and 160, it's just going to maintain your pre-programmed basal rates. So now let's talk about the low end of the spectrum. If it sees you dropping below that 112.5, it is going to reduce your basal rates. And if it sees you dropping below 70, it is going to completely suspend your insulin altogether so as to avoid that low or blunt the effects of that low. It doesn't always avoid it, but it can do great, great, great wonders in lessening the effect of that load, and sometimes it does avoid it. It also has two modes that you can go into, a sleep mode and an exercise mode. Now for the exercise mode, it's going to target you into a higher blood glucose range because most people on the whole when they exercise drop. Not always, but most. So for the lower range, it's going to set that at 140 when you're exercising, the upper range, still 160, everything still applies. But this exercise aspect is not completely perfect and I'll discuss that in a moment. 
The other mode that you can go into is sleep, and you can set a schedule for this, which is very, very helpful. As in, if you know you tend to go to bed at like 11 every night and wake up at 8 a.m., you can just set your pump to automatically switch into that mode without having to press any buttons or anything like that. Very useful. So for the sleep mode, it's going to tighten that range and make your top end 120 and make your bottom 112.5. Now, important thing to note there, it is not doing any bolus corrections above 120. So like I said, if you go above 160, it adjusts the basal rates up. If you go above 180, it starts giving you those micro corrections. This does not happen in the sleep mode. It will increase basal, but it will not automatically deliver insulin. And I should also say you can have two sleep schedules. So you can have a weekend one and a weekday one or however you see fit. So we got the tech specs out of the way. The important thing is now, does it do it? In my opinion, Yes, 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 it does. And it delivers in spades. So let's talk about the pros. Right off, the biggest pro in the biggest bold font print you can find is overnight to me. In my opinion, that has been the biggest game changer. My sleep has so, 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 so improved and been affected by this system because I'm not going low and I'm also staying in a tighter range. So my quality of sleep has, I think, gone up significantly. Of course, we all know sleep is important, but for me, I think for a type one diabetic, it's a gorgeous time, if possible, to clock in time and range. You don't tend to be doing stressful activities or things like that that are going to raise your cortisol levels and thus raise your blood sugar without you being able to predict it and you also are not eating anything overnight. So it's the most, in my mind, kind of untouched period that we can possibly get with type one diabetes and thus an opportunity to clock in more time and range. Moving on from that time and range, I've sort of already touched on it, but it is just significantly increased my time and range. So I go through my Dexcom Clarity app and when I initially started Control IQ, I would say I was in like the 70, high 70% time and range. High 70s was a very good week. And I thought, you know, I'm doing pretty well. All of a sudden when I started Control IQ, I'm in the 90s, sometimes like the mid, sometimes the high 90s. And that's percent time in range. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. It also shows me how I would consider myself a very conscientious diabetic, very much always looking at my Dexcom, always digesting the information, trying to make healthy food choices, all of that good stuff but I was not able to see these numbers on my own with that kind of behavior. I just wasn't. So that jump up from, you know, like 20% more time in range really is extraordinary to me. One of the reasons I went on the pump in the first place, and this was before the T-Slim X2, I was on the Medtronic 640G, I was going low all the time on injections. So for me, lows were blunted when I went on to the insulin pump and they have been further blunted, if not, you, you can never say eliminated, but very, very, very significantly decreased with the control IQ aspect. From just a technical perspective, the upgrade I found very easy. Of course, this depends on your sort of computer literacy and how much confidence you have in terms of all the upload stuff, but Tandem's customer service were amazing with any questions that I have. And I am certain if you needed a little bit more guidance in terms of the upgrade of the system, which is all done through software on your computer, you do not need a new pump to take advantage of this software, providing you're in a country that approves Control IQ. But yeah, it, it, it was very easy, very seamless, no complaints there whatsoever. So let's talk about the cons. First up, you cannot temporarily suspend your insulin on Control IQ. It just does not allow for you to do that. You have to come out of 
being in control IQ and having it activated in order to suspend insulin, which yes, I understand in theory, but sometimes I know what the algorithm thinks I'm going to do 30 minutes in the future is not completely accurate. As in the algorithm can't know I accidentally just bolused for 45 grams of carbohydrate and my food is not going to arrive for an hour. You know what I'm saying? So you either have to treat in those instances or what I tend to do is hard unclip my pump. This is not ideal by any stretch, but if I know I am dropping lower than I can see it predicting, or I know I've done something funky with my insulin that I didn't mean to do, or I shouldn't have done, or I don't have access to the food in time or whatever, I will actually unclip my pump where I would normally like to suspend the basal rates completely way earlier than what I think the algorithm and what I've experienced the algorithm would predict for me. Which brings me on to my next point, which is related to this, and that is the exercise mode. The exercise mode is also not perfect because you really need to activate that exercise mode before starting exercising, if that makes sense. It's a great concept, very, very great concept, and it does work, absolutely, but sometimes you need to preemptively start that exercise mode in order to not see a drop. At least I've found that. And clearly Tandem does as well because they even say on their website, like you probably need to start it before exercising or you may need to start it before exercising. The other thing that I don't really particularly have many, many issues with, but I know a lot of people have experienced loss of connection between the pump and your Dexcom. Like usually it probably needs to be more or less on the same side of your body. So if you've got your Dexcom on your right side of your abdomen or the back of your arm and the right, if it's approved there for the country that you're in, then you kind of tend to need to have your pump on that side of the body in order to really maintain a secure and consistent connection of readings and communication between the two devices. It will tolerate 20 minutes of loss of connection from your Dexcom before it flips out of control IQ and reverts back to your basal rates that you've pre-programmed into the pump. I actually personally have not knowingly been kicked out of the control IQ software as a result of this ever. Take that for what it's worth. I'm not saying it's the same for everybody, but I personally haven't experienced this but I have had other people comment that it's quite frustrating that it sometimes loses connection from your Dexcom to your pump. And I can totally understand that being a frustration because it only works if you've got connection and you're feeding data from your Dexcom G6. Important thing to note, you can upgrade the system on your own as long as you have a computer and the necessary plugs and everything like that and you've done the training. However, you still, this is not a plug and play software. You don't just set it and forget it. You do need to have the correct basal rates for yourself, more or less programmed into the pump and correction factors programmed into the pump. Those things really need to be accurate for you to make the most of this system. Otherwise, if those things are inaccurate, maybe the correction it's going to be giving you is too much or too little if you're correction factor is accordingly too much or too little. So I would just say on the whole, in order to make the most use of this software as humanly possible, really make sure when you step into using this software that your basal rates and your correction factors are as spot on as you can possibly get them. There's ways to test basal rates and really this should be done with your doctor, so I won't go into it here, but I think that helps you make the most use of the software as humanly possible and is a very important aspect. I think a lot of people think, oh, semi-closed loop, it'll just like plug and play, no problem. And it does to a certain extent, but you really, really need those factors to be correct in order to get the best out of the system and to expect the best out of the system. This is my second insulin pump. And for me, this is the finest insulin pump on the market right now because of this software. It's a good pump, no doubt about that. The touchscreen is cool. 
it's a slim profile, all of that stuff, it's it's a good pump. And, and I talk about this in my review video, but what makes this an outstanding pump is the software. Whether you have just basal IQ or you have control IQ, I know the rollout in different countries are sort of varied at the moment. Both of those aspects are incredible. And so basal IQ, just to avoid lows, I think is worth it. But then once you add that control IQ and you get the blunting of those highs as well and just are able to clock more time in range, especially, especially overnight, I've found, game changer. Game changer. Would I recommend it? Million percent yes. Have I been astounded by the technology? A million percent yes. As always, please, please, please take this information, digest it, filter it through your own needs and wants and desires and make the decision that's right for you. But those are my thoughts on Control IQ. I think it's incredible. I think it's such an asset to our community and I'm really, really, really excited for what's to come out of tandem, out of all insulin pump companies. I'm just thrilled to see this kind of technology. What a time to be alive, genuinely. I'm grateful to be alive in this time where I can take advantage of this technology and I would just highly, highly recommend this pump because of this software. So with that being said, I thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. I wish you great blood sugars, straight CGM lines, and the best of luck on your insulin pump search and software quest. But most of all, and most, most, most importantly, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.